So how do you rig with a minimalist setup? Gear that you can use both for a slack line and a high line. Well, let me show you that on this episode of How Not to High Line. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks, and this is a place where I slacklined a lot before I highlined a lot. And I'm gonna show you how to use the setup that I explain in a different video um, where I advocate for using the same gear for slacklining and highlining because the most expensive thing you'll ever do in slacklining is buying gear twice. So I'm gonna show you the minimal amount of things that you need to buy in order to slackline and highline. I'm gonna also show you how to build and upgrade off of this setup so you don't outgrow your gear. Okay, so this is basically all you need to slackline and highline. It's not too much of an investment considering what you get to do. Now, if you don't know what this is, you're gonna to have to go to my Purely For Fun playlist on YouTube and find out. Here we have static rope, which we can use in the park and on a high line and rigging all natural and a variety of things. A leash, which we don't necessarily need in a park, but I'm showing you everything while I'm here. Our tension system. And I am gonna to try to use a Prusik today, but that is, if you can afford it, ideal to buy. There's also a Russian version you can get for $80. Um, a harness and something to tie into when you're near a cliff edge. The soft release, I'm gonna show you how to set up some connectors and we'll talk about those. A tag line and your slack line. Okay, so it's nice to use span sets around trees because they're bomber, they're thick, they're nice, but a rope you can use for so many things. Let me show you the rope, how I use it around a tree. Now you don't need tree pro the kind you like buy, okay? You do need to protect the trees though. So I have a cheap tree pro called a towel. And I can set that right there. I'm going to be a tree hugger and go around the tree. Now, one thing that helps a rope stay stable when you're going around a tree with a rope is to go around a second time and then you have um, something hugging the tree while you have the two strands coming off. So when I let go of this, the whole thing doesn't just fall. And then basically, I just tie two figure eights. I tie one on this side. There are multiple ways to do this. Figure eights can be difficult to untie later, but I'm only gonna show you one way in this video because this video would be really long otherwise. So, I have two figure eights. If you don't know how to tie a figure eight, you need to Google that. Anyways, um, I adjust it so it pulls towards the tree I'm trying to go towards. And then I have this setup right here. I advocate for sew-in loops because now I don't need a web lock on this side. I just connect my sew-in loop to this. So, I don't think you should use a carabiner here in this situation because you really can't use a carabiner on a master point on a high line. So either way, you need a metal shackle or a soft shackle. Now, rope on rope is bad, but that's when something is oscillating on each other. We're gonna have a whole nother episode on that because that is a very important issue. But because this point doesn't move, I can put a soft shackle inside of it and it won't cut through it. How do you know that, Ryan? Good question because I've only done it for 10 years and I still have no abrasion on my soft shackles. Anyways, you take your sewing loop, you put it on there and voila, you have a bomber connection that is technically stronger than the webbing itself. So right there is all you need for one side of your slack line in the park. So the reason I advocate for sewing loops is because you can build on the system that you already have bought. So let's say this is the middle of my slack line. I have a sewing loop on my one piece and a sewing loop on the other. You can connect these with either a square quick link and then tape them. So your ring when you're highlining doesn't get caught on it. I hear that's effective. Or you can use a soft shackle. And if you put it in here like this, we'll call it an inverted soft shackle, 
where instead of going over the top, you go under itself. This is a button knot style. There are several different styles. But you go under itself and then over the head with the noose. Then, that's not going to come undone. Then you invert it. And by doing that, the button knot is not, get it, in the way when you are trying to highline with it. So you can see here that uh, your ring would slide easily over that and it's not going to come undone, especially if there's tension on it. If it makes you feel better, you could tape it if this was maybe a backup line and you think that this and the wind could ever undo this. Um, I don't think it could, uh, but it hasn't been tested. So maybe, uh, maybe tape that, maybe don't, but we're going to uh, test this on our slack line just for the hell of it. So here is my soft release. It essentially is this sew and loop here. Let's see if I can pull that out. This sew and loop with the webbing that goes around and around and around and around. Um, Jerry has a really great video about this. I think Slacktivity does too. But soft releases are amazing uh, because you don't need a tension system to release it. You just untie this and it unravels. This side is going to go on my anchor. And then I have a web lock that is compatible with a soft release. Uh, I like the pure lock. It doesn't require any extra connectors. And uh, here's my tail, which I'll tie off in just a minute. But let's connect it to my anchor. So I have the same setup here with the two figure eights. I'm going to finish padding my tree after I'm done putting very little tension on it because then it's it'll stay in place because not using normal tree pro it does fall unless you get some straps for it and get fancy but we're trying to just go dirt bag right now i'm going to put the bow shackle side on my ropes because that can be pulled out in the fork that the ropes pull and then my soft release has this nice flat pin to sit on so now i just take the webbing and i put it in the web lock by taking a bite of it now it's called pre-tensioning you slide that down the top and then you just pull it. So that's staying right now. Now I can finish padding it. So know the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. My towel does not go all the way around. But you gotta understand what tree pro needs to protect the most so you can make do with what you have. This rubbing method right here is where it's gonna rub the tree down. It's squeezing this bark right here is not going to be that big of a deal. Now there's a redwood back there and that would be kind of a big deal. One alternative you can do is use some branches that are laying on the ground and put some branches along your, your thing here and it squeezes those dispersing the load and it doesn't leave a ring around the tree. This is my tagline. I leave it in the bag. It's just uh, I think three mil cordelette and I'm going to pad this tree with this bag. This is also good to know for highlining. You can use things like this or spare webbing to pad your stuff. So that right there takes care of the majority of the abrasion on this tree. And since the bark is hard, the little bit in the back, it won't be that big of a deal. If it was, I could put a stick back there. The less tree touching your rope, the better for your rope, since you're trying to make your gear last a long time. Just a thought. So I'm gonna go over there, make sure my tree pro, my rope, everything's sitting nice and normal. It's not just pulling on one strand because it's twisted funny. Then I'm going to start to tension this. So that side's good. I'm glad I checked it. It was not pulling evenly. You just adjust it a little bit. I came back over here and I uh, added my dyno here to see how much force I can put on here with the setup that I'm gonna show you. But everything's the same. I made sure this is pulling evenly and I basically pre-tension this as much as possible by just pulling the slack line towards me and pulling the tail in. Okay, so I'm at 78 pounds of force or 0.32 kilonewtons. Okay, so technically the cheapest way to do this, and you can home make these, I explained that in my other video. This webbing will get squished if I do a prusik over it. Um, 
it will kind of relax after a while, but it will wear out your webbing a lot quicker. And if it slips while under higher tension, it, it actually could damage the webbing. This is not ideal, but I'm going to show it to you anyways, because if you have no other choices, it's better than nothing. Um, or if you drop your line grip and you're highlining, you don't have to ruin your trip over, you know, not having it. There is that Russian version. It is only $80, whereas the line grip's $225. So um, there is a nice middle option rather than going to this route. But let's start with this, see how many kilonewtons I can get, and then just skip right over to the line grip. So a Prusik is you just take um, some cordelette, like a four or five mil accessory cord. That's just a fisherman's knot. And then you take the other end that's not knotted. And then you stick the knot through that. One, two, three. Now you want to dress it. You want it to start off with something that looks like that. Okay, so now that I got that on there, I just take the hangover, flip it upside down. The tail of your webbing goes in the hangover. And then you have a three to one here. Now, we don't want this to slip. So I'm gonna slide this out a little further. And then I'm gonna to start to pinch it. And you can feel when it's grabbing. It kind of wants to twist the line. But if you're this far out, it's good. You can see this. Let's see how uh, tight I can get it. So I'm at a half a kilonewton or about 108 pounds of force right now. I'm going to reset this since I pulled it in as much as I could. Now you're probably wondering how long this line is. 75 to 80 meters. Uh, if you're new to slacklining and you live in America, you're gonna have to learn to love meters. People will force you to. Just multiply by three and it's roughly about where your feet are gonna be. But anyways, so resetting it by just loosening the knot. And then I make sure that it's grabbing the webbing again so it doesn't slip. And then I'm gonna pull some more to see if I can get this to 200, 200 pounds. I would definitely touch in the middle here. It's uh, because it's nylon. This is Sky Pilot from Slack Life BC. So you can see here how it's squishing the Sky Pilot and it'll stay looking like that after I remove it. Okay, so I'm kind of over this thing. Um, it is an option, but let's see if the line grip does give me any more advantage. Um, I doubt it. It's just not gonna jack my webbing up. So um, I'm gonna put this so it's hanging underneath. So then you take your hangover and you clip that to it. So it's a very simple, nice setup. You clip that in there. Let's see what I can get on this guy. Okay, so I got it a little tighter. It's 158 pounds of force, not much. If I was to be highlining a 70 to 80 meter line right now, this is plenty. So really the most money saver we can do is find a way to get this line tight enough. You're probably not gonna be rigged your full 100 meter line that you buy, because I recommend that you buy a full 100 meters. Otherwise, you'd outgrow it too quick. Probably don't get to rig the full length in a park. But slacklining 100 meters in the park is a little sketchy because you got to put it so high in the tree so you don't touch in the middle. Yeah, this is, this is a nice length, unless you're into longlining, which means you should just buy some freaking pulleys. But anyways, um, Slacktivity recommends you put another hangover on the tree or the little gizmos they sell and then come back over to here and put a lot of line locker on here and pull it, making a five to one. Well, we're gonna try to skip one of those steps because the idea here is that you also have friends who buy this minimalist setup because then you can combine your webbing and you can share the hangovers. So this right here is the tail end of my webbing, the very end. Uh, if you don't have a sewn loop on it, I just tied a knot on it. I'm not gonna put much force on it. And it's attached right here to a separate soft shackle, okay? So this is just a fixed uh, piece of webbing. This tail that I was pulling, I put um, just a knot in it because uh, I'm not putting that much force on it. Ideally, you'd put a line lock, but whatever. Um, 
Just trying to keep it simple, the most minimal stuff. You don't need an extra beaner this way. I do have this setup just because it's always on here. This is great if you're um, not doing big high lines or you're new and you're scared to clip this to your belay loop and then clip this to just your side. And then when you're trying to use it, you unclip it off your side and clip it to your high line so you don't drop it. So I just take the fixed tail here and I clip it to the second hangover, which if your friend has one um, and you're both high lining or slack lining, then you don't have to buy any extra gear. And this technically, I think gives you a five to one. So this section here, all I have to do is stretch that to the very end and then I can start pulling. And this gives me a lot, wow, a lot more advantage. Another trick is you can put your foot behind the tree as long as your webbing's not rubbing the tree and get some leverage. Also, if you have your friend's hangover, you probably have your friend giving you twice as much pull. Because right now I'm technically by myself. I have in the past when I didn't have a quality pulley system, I would just ask people walking by who usually are staring at you for an hour while you're setting this up, wondering what you're doing, uh, get them involved. Maybe they can help you pull, saving you hundreds of dollars on a pulley setup. Ugh. Okay. Okay. I give up. Let's see where we're at. I'm at 2.8 kilonewtons. So I got over a kilonewton with a 3 to 1. And with my 5 to 1, I think it's a 5 to 1, it just about at 3. So that's really, really cool. I, especially if I had a second person, I could probably get it to 3.2, 3.3 easily. Um, well, let's see if I touch in the middle. Okay, before you get on, uh, don't forget to take the line grip off, obviously. But you don't ever just want to leave your tail hanging because uh, it can slip in here which can damage your webbing. If you're just in a park, it's not the end of the world, but your webbing gets damaged. And then in a high line, it's good practice to always do this. So if you don't have a dyno in the system, you don't want to put this on the soft shackle. Uh, what we're trying to prevent is it to slip sideways or anything. So you want to pull it directly behind, have enough tail, and then do that overhand. I think they're Munter mules. Um, you just go over maybe twice, just like the uh, soft release. Um, and this way, if there's any tension on them, you can technically untie them if it did slip just a, a hair. Um, I'm an advocate for taking the tail of things like this. This is one thing I could see uh, needing a carabiner for. Um, and clipping it to, I'll call it the master point. Um, it doesn't quite reach this soft shackle. But I would clip that off to a bolt in the, in the back or something like that but it's being pulled directly back. So this is a really nice, clean, safe, redundant setup. Okay, so I almost was able to walk that without touching in the middle. I just need a few more pounds of force or kilonewtons or whatever. Um, it also, nylon stretches and it settles. So right now, it settled, holy shit. Settled down to 2.3 kilonewtons. Um, so I lost half a kilonewton there just getting on it. So I could pull it again with my five to one setup, but I'm gonna see if I can pull a few more tricks out of my hat and uh, see if I can get it to past three kilonewtons. Now this is a stretchy webbing. So like the more webbing I have out, the more I'm fighting against the stretch before it gives me anything. So then I'll take my fixed tail and I'm going to come over to here, make sure it's flat because that helps. Flat, flat, flat. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and pull. Okay. Whoa, I'm at three kilonewtons. So I'm going to walk on this one more time to get everything settled. And then I'll see if I can add one more multiplier into the setup with just carabiners, which does drag your webbing, which does cause premature abrasion. But let's see if, let's see what we can do. Okay, so I 
probably could have kept going, but my feet were touching the grass. I, want, I do want to see if I can get it tighter. It settled back down to 2.6 kilonewtons. So if I kept fighting it and taking it back up to three until it stayed, I could probably do this 70 to 80 meter, right? Which is pretty good for nylon. Lower stretch webbing, I, in theory, would be easier to do this. You can still only put on so much force by yourself in the park with this setup. Uh, you just don't have to pull as much with a lower stretch webbing. But this is great webbing when you're high lining because it's bouncy and stretchy. So if you are going to do only a, a 20, 30, or 40 meter line when you're starting especially, you really do want something soft to land on. Otherwise, um, you, could, you could get hurt. I, I trained on pretty low stretch webbing um, under 30 meters, and it, it's not fun to whip on. Um, back in the day, we had to catch because it was so bad. And then if you get above 100 meters and you connect other people's webbing, then uh, it's still a great webbing to use. We used it on the 300 meter at the GOAT, um, the project we did with Slack Life BC last year. I highly recommend this webbing. My only hesitation was whether or not I could get it tight enough in the park, but I feel like I can. So let's try one more experiment. Now, can we multiply this guy? That's the question. Carabiners give you friction. Friction is bad, but multiplication is good. How much multiplication can you get for the friction that you get? Now, I'm just going to stick a knot in here. You could line lock this, but that requires more things. We're trying to go minimal here. So, if I do that and that, then I basically have, I don't know, a something to one on my three to one. You do the math. I'm just trying to slack line here. Okay, good enough. When you have the line going back and forth, you have to reset a lot. That would be very hard with a Prusik, by the way, because resetting it's a bitch each time. Let's see how far I got it to. 3.46, hot dog. I'm going to undo this. I'm gonna tie off my tail. Let's see if I can get all the way across without touching in the middle. Okay, so I wasn't exactly sure if I could tension this at 70 or 80 meters with just a hangover or two. This is all gear that I would take on a high line. And so that is what's gonna save a lot of money. Now I wanna show you how to set up the same thing as if this was a high line. So we're going to uh, break down a few of the things. Really the only difference is how you build the anchor. If you're gonna use a tree, don't use one that's on the side of a mud cliff where all the roots are exposed and it looks like it's gonna fall out. Because I don't care how you back up that high line. If, you, if that tree comes out, you're still attached to it when it falls down the cliff. Just really commit to whatever anchor you attach to, including a boulder that you wrap. If it falls off the cliff, you're going with it. But anyways, the only difference here is you add a second line underneath and you tape it at home. So you do need to buy tape. Um, the fiber tape will last longer if you're not going to leave it taped all the time. Some electrical tape, some duct tape, some climbing tape. They've all got pros and cons. My sew and loop soft shackle attachment over there looks perfect. I stepped on it twice. It felt fine. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. We are going to do some brake tests with it so you'll see that you can trust it. Really the only question that people have is will it come undone? Because you can't exactly slide out and check it without committing to being on the line, right? Now keep in mind, you can, if you already have a web block and you're trying to just add a few pieces of gear, you can use other web blocks. You just have to buy another metal shackle. And then the soft release is on the two metal shackles. So don't, try to recycle the stuff you have. Try to get sewing loops on your, your slack lines. If your manufacturer nearest to you, the webbing you wanna buy doesn't offer sewing loops, ask them to. Enough people asking and they will need to eventually do it because it's a thing. 
and it's a great way to extend your high lines without having to spend thousands of dollars on big pieces of webbing that you'll rarely use because how often are you going to rig massive, massive high lines? Okay, I'm going to detention this. It still has 3.08 kilonewtons on the line, which is amazing that it stopped stretching out and losing tension. Um, so after I walked on it, it still has a full three. So obviously you want to undo your tails. So this is not going to get stuck when we release it. Um, these are still loose, which means our soft release has been holding just fine. Um, if I have tails backed up to here, I want to undo everything. Now, if this was a high line, you don't want to have it completely unclipped from the, the cliff because if something were to slip or whatever, um, you don't want it to fall down. So technically I have this uh, tail right here attached to my master point. Anyways, soft releases are not rocket science. You just undo your Velcro and soft release. Careful not to get your hands stuck in there. You just release slowly. Release that tail, release that tail, release that tail. You don't need the super long 45 foot balance community soft release. I mean, I, I have tension on this right now, but it just doesn't take that much. Now I still feel a lot of force on this and I only have this much tail left, but I still don't think I need the, the full size. Yeah, that went well. So that took about 30 minutes. We're going to have to do the highlighting section in the next episode, but I felt like going into detail is going to help the people trying to learn about slacklining. It's going to help them the most. Now we're going into another 30-ish minute episode on the highlining stuff for this minimalist gear that I'm trying to present. Stuff that you can use for both slacklining and highlining to really keep the cost of this hobby to a minimum. Now remember, if you're trying to longline, your slackline might be a little bit higher than is safe. Therefore, you shouldn't slackline.